on see. Sports Center. Nice to see you. So let's talk about this series. Spurs are now up two games to one. And that sequence was amazing. And two players both had 31 points. Kawhi Leonard, Russell Westbrook. But when you look at their big points where they stood out the most when it mattered most, it's Leonard's edge over Westbrook. It was definitely Leonard's edge. You had two guys. The blame after the game, and he says he's got to get the ball around to his teammates better. How can he do that? It's going to be tough to do that because if you watch what will happen late in this. Oh, what we have for you still to come on Sports Center. We go live to Churchill Downs. We're also going to have a very special guest regarding today's Kentucky Derby. Also, what about LeBron James against the Hawks? Was he targeted by Teague? We look deeper into that conspiracy. And also ahead, oh yeah, there was a special birthday for just a legend in baseball. Uh, the Say Hey Kid, that's your hint. Stay tuned. This is Sports Center. Last night, Vince Scully called Willie Mays the best player he ever saw. High praise considering Mays, of course, played 10, 22 seasons with the Giants, the Dodgers' biggest rival. Our top birthday coming up. Where do you know that was your music? So, you know, Randy has given the music He's to me. He's given the music to you. He's got that and kind I've of accepted. power. I've accepted. I've accepted. Barry Munros is here. He's up early. I love when he wakes up early and yep. shares space with us yep. to talk Stanley Cup playoffs. All the time, every night. Love it. Yep. What's not to like? One game. One game last night, and it was a good one. In a great execution right there by Tampa Bay. And again, you let them hang around. Uh, they've got all that playoff experience now from last year, and then they end up beating you. It always happens with the Islanders, it seems. Exactly. And the Lightning, they just are one win away from their second straight conference final. They went to the finals, of course, a year ago as well. Nobody has more goals, as I mentioned, in the playoffs than Nikita Kucherov, who's got eight. How does he put himself in position, not only to score goals in the playoffs, but timely goals? Well, number one, he's on a great line. The Problem for yes, Steve Eisenman, the GM. All right, you know, we know this, but... There were no penalties called in the third period of this game last night. We've seen that in nine games, Barry, this playoffs. And you know what? If I'm a player, if I'm a head coach, I'm mystified. I can't figure out officiating. It's inconsistent, and I don't know the timing. Like, what's a penalty? When is a penalty? How do you figure it? Only interference thing, though. It's incidental contact. I got to work on That's that a one. Very tough call. All right, uh, stick around. You're in the comfy chair, so stick around. I will. We'll preview three Stanley Cup playoff games today. Busy Can't day. Busy day. Love it. Well, with all the attempts to speed up baseball, there is one moment in the game in which the player and fans always want to slow down so they can enjoy it. That would be the home run. Still to this day, one of the most exciting and anticipated aspects of the game. Baseball fans are especially happy this season. Why? That's because the home run rate is on pace to be its highest since the 2006 season, with the average home run distance measuring over 400 feet. That's average. Brandon Haywood back with us. All good if you're a Golden State Warrior fan, of course. They made it look easy, taking a two games to none lead against Portland. But now the series shifts to Portland. Not an easy place to win. And, you know, the Warriors did have to battle back in game two. So if you're Portland, Brendan, what do you got to do to get back in this series? If, I'm if the coach does make an adjustment, can he do it mid-game, for instance, or do you think it would be better for this team to just from the get-go, starting lineup, boom? Well, you know what you can... Eastern on ABC. Thank you, Brendan. Thank you, Elsie. It be. Still up on SportsCenter, imagine being built to win a Stanley Cup only to lose in the second round. That could be the situation for the Washington Capitals if they lose tonight against Pittsburgh. One of three game fives today. Barry Melrose will look at it coming up. Also, All right, nice time with Elko and I have friends. And here is Barry Melrose, and he's back as promised. And let's talk about, sorry, Randy Scott, I'm bringing up a sore subject. Go ahead, go uh, ahead. The Washington Capitals. I mean, this team, as Ugh. I mentioned earlier, this was the team. This time, no mistaking, built to win a Stanley Cup. They brought guys in the dressing room that have won Stanley Cups. They're tougher. They had four lines. They had a great goalie. They win the President's Trophy. And now they're on the brink of elimination tonight at home against Pittsburgh. If you're the head coach, Barry Trotz, what are you telling this group? What are you doing? I'm challenging. In certain areas, but you got to be great. You gotta, you be, gotta great, be great, and and you gotta give Pittsburgh credit. This yeah. team is is finding ways to do it without Latang, without all the injuries they got, without Crosby being a factor. Twenty-one-year-old yep. is the star, no question. All right, Blues and Stars in the West, tied at two. 
What a fun series to watch, yeah. right? A lot of offense, not great for the goalies, especially oh. in Dallas. But Kari Lettinen pulled one out the other day, so the series is tied at two. But, Barry, what's your take on this series so far as we move forward? You hit the nail on the head, goaltending. But I, I think it's all with goaltending with Dallas. If they get the goaltending, they're going to win the series. And don't forget to stay up really late. Nashville, San Jose, that's a great series, that's too. That's an unbelievable tied series that no two. one knows about. Yeah, we do. We do. And now we're sharing. Yeah. All right, Barry, thanks. Thank Good you. job. All right, also ahead this morning on Sports Center, you can stop me if you heard this before. Alex Ovechkin and the Capitals facing elimination against the Penguins. Find out why history is not on Washington's side heading into Game 5. And the season is still young for the Yankees, but the postseason is far away for a team that is six games under 500, last in the AL East. Former Yankee Raul Abana is in-house with us to share his Bronx turnaround tale. And we are going golfing with the top pick in the NFL draft, Shelly Smith on Jared Goff's acclamation to his new team and new city. He is the first overall pick who is overshadowed by all that draft day drama. But now the spotlight squarely on the La La Land star. Shelly Smith checks in with Rams quarterback Jared Goff. And it's Dave Yeager, three seasons, three straight playoff appearances. And he's out. Our insider going to join us for what's next for the Grizzlies. Out as the Grizzlies head coach after three seasons in Memphis. Under Jaeger, the Grizzlies made the playoffs all three seasons. They were swept by the Spurs in the first round this year. The Grizzlies, however, were hampered by injuries all season long. They used an NBA record 28 different players this season. And Jaeger's 598 win percentage, that is the best in the franchise's hitter, Chris Broussard. Chris, you just heard what Wallace had to say. What do you think he meant by that? Well, what he meant... Wallace also said that they wanted to foster a strong culture required to achieve sustainable long-term success. So if they want long-term success, now they got to turn their attention elsewhere. Who might they be targeting? Well, right now, the... the like their who dat suggestion. Yeah. I thought that was good. Still ahead on Sports Center, the Capitals have their backs against the wall. They are down 3-1 to the Penguins. Barry Melrose joins us to give us the Caps' keys to survival. Plus, aces everywhere tonight. Raul Abanez takes us inside a hitter's mind when greatness on the mound awaits. And Laramie Tunsil scheduled to speak to the media at 11.45 Eastern when the Dolphins rookie and top pick steps to the podium. We're going to take you there live on Sports. Pilates, Matt. No. My ERA is not that low, though. We're back to Louisville live next. The 142nd running of the Kentucky Derby going off in hours. Janine Edwards is joining us from the track. Straight ahead. Ahead on this edition of Sports Center, we are awaiting Dolphins top pick and draft drama poster board Laramie Tunsil. The fallout continues from the hacking of his social media pages. He's going to address the media at 11.45 Eastern. Teddy Atlas is going to join us to make his pick on tonight's fight between Canelo Alvarez and Amir Khan in Vegas. And it is Derby Day. We are live in Louisville for the big hats, the pretty ponies. We've got the need for speed in the 142nd run for the roses. I'm not at the Derby, unfortunately, but I might have rented a mini pony for later in the day. Seriously. It is fight night in Vegas. Canelo Alvarez and Amir Khan. Teddy Atlas is going to predict tonight's title fight. And Dolphins. Happy Friday, everyone, and good morning. It is Sports Center Coast to Coast. I'm Nicole Briscoe out at Los Angeles. Today's show, it's, it's a packed one. We'll get you Derby ready. Plus, we will ponder this question. Do Thunder fans really only have three more opportunities to see Kevin Durant play? at home and in person. David Lloyd is on the and the Blazers. Coming up, another rookie in the NFL on the field, the one who gets the chance to run behind what is arguably the best line in the NFL, Zeke Elliott in his number 21 in Dallas. And, and then this quick with Steven Jackson. I want to start right there. The, uh, the Steph Curry news, he won't play. Mm -hmm. Now they got to go on the road. What do you think that's going to be like? It's, it's dangerous. Uh, Damian Lillard is a great scorer at home, and uh, they play be better at home, but... I don't see it being a problem for game three. I think Golden State is still. That definitely is the Spurs. You know, they only lost one game at home all season. It was to the Warriors, but the Thunder were able to go in and steal a game from them just a few days ago. Mm -hmm. You played in San Antonio for four years. Give us an idea. What is Greg Popovich saying to the guys now that they're trying to get the home court advantage back? Well, Oklahoma City. They're one of the most composed teams ever in the NBA. Uh, they don't lose their assessment, considering history says LaMarcus Aldridge is, is going to be a huge factor in this mm -hmm. one. He's averaging nearly 40 points in the first two games. But Deion Waiters came out this week and said, look, no one man can beat us. Let's just say he's right. Mm -hmm. What can the Spurs do 
to get more people involved in their offense. Well, I think they... 30 Eastern. Now, this is a quote, quote from you yesterday. If the Hawks don't like the Cavs dropping threes on them, <laughs> try blocking one. Or they can take Charles Barkley's approach and, quote, take someone out. <laughs> the Cavs made a record, an NBA record, 25 in game two against the Hawks. Needless to say, the Cavs coach, Tyron Lue, took exception to Barkley's opinion. Uh, listen to this. Brian Windhorst earlier, maybe the way to take J.R. Smith out of the game is to just leave him, him completely alone and open, <laughs> and maybe he won't hit those threes. What is the right way to beat the Cavs? Well, you got to try to take... If you're a Cavs fan, it's just really ugly and painful if you're a Hawks fan. Uh, the series has been 18 points. It's the average of margin of victory in each one of these games. At this point, what can the Hawks do just to make it a game? I have to say it now. Plays better at home. Hawks mm -hmm. get to play this game at home. Mm -hmm. Where do you expect them to see better? Offensively. Play better. You can see more of him this afternoon, 3.30 Eastern, on the jump with Rachel Nichols. Thanks.